In this episode, we will be learning how to send emails using Python's SMTP lib and email modules. We'll start with SMTP lib. Of course, to start off, you have to import it. And probably need some kind of a host. You'll have to replace this with your own uh, address, of course. Subject equals test email. Do from you should really use your own at email for the from. And then whatever text you want to put into your email. And then we just have to create the body of the email. So we need to do a slash r slash n, which is a carriage return and a line ending. Join. From we have and then we have a two a subject. Print this out, you'll actually see what we have here. Let's actually print it, print it. You print it out, this is, this is kind of what our email will look like from to subject, and then of course the text in it. So then you just do your server equals smtp lib.smtp and your host. This is going to fail because we, we're using a fake host. And then you do server.sendmail using your from, your to in the side of a list, and then your body. Of course, this will fail too. So, what we need to think about here is that um, this list part here, the to list, you can actually put a list of email addresses into. So that's why that's a list. So if you want to send to multiple people, you can. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. And of course, good etiquette is to always close your server. So you do a server.quit. Of course, this won't work either because server isn't really defined since we failed to have a good host. But the basic idea here is to connect to your server and then send the mail that you've formatted up above and then you quit at the very end. And you should be really good to go to send to send to basic emails this way. Now, occasionally, depending on how you set up, you'll have to log into your server. So the SMTP library provides a login function that you just pass a username and password to. So it would look basically like this: server.login and the username and password for your SMTP server. You'll have to look at your ISP's documentation to determine if you actually need to do that or not. Um, the next part would be really to put this code into its own function instead of just typing it all out in the command line. So let's look at that next. All right, let's create ourselves a new little script. So we just need to open up a new window and basically start copying and pasting code into this. But first, we'll open up, we'll import SMTP lib. And then we'll create our function, send mail. I want to pass it a host. 
subject to header and a from header, and then the body text. Then we can take some of this code that we have before and just paste it in there basically. change a few things. So this will be from adder 42 adder this will be subject and this will be body text instead of just text. So far so good. So in this case we'll have server equals rsmtp Live dot smtp. And we'll pass it in on the host server that send mail from adder to adder and body. And then, of course, we want to close out our connection, so we quit the server. And then we just need to set up our if name equals main piece. So here we can have our host equals whatever. You just need to find out where your credentials are. You create a subject of some sort. I like to Put in that I'm testing from Python so I know where this email is coming from. To adder will probably be some email address I don't care about, like a Yahoo address or whatever. I will just make up something. And your from adder will be your email address. And then, of course, you want some body text. You need to tell your, per tell your person what is so cool about Python. And so here we just call send mail, which is a function up above with our host subject to adder, from adder, and body text. And this code will work just like the code we did before, but now it's callable. So we can actually import this module that we've created and call it anywhere we want to in any of our programs. Of course, first of all, we have to save it. So let's do that real quick. And we'll just call it sendmail.py. So now we're good to go and we have a nice module that we can reuse in any piece of our code. Now normally you won't ho save your host in your Python script. Instead, you'll want to save this kind of information into a config file. You'll probably also want to save your from address in the config file. The reason for this is that if you change your back end, i.e. you actually change your ISP or your hosting provider, then your email address will probably change and so will the server that you'll be using. So let's create a config file and add this inf that information to it. So here's a text editor. And we'll create an SD SMTP section. And we'll add a server. And we'll add our from adder here too. And we just need to save this somewhere. I can't even type today, but email.ini. 
All right. So now we just need to edit our file a little bit, and we'll be good to go again. So we need to import a couple of new items. We'll import the system library, which we'll be getting to in a future video, and we'll import the config parser that we learned about previously. Um, let's do this down here. And finally, we'll import OS. All right. So a lot of this information won't be here anymore. We don't need that. And our firm address doesn't need to be in here anymore because we store it somewhere else. And we'll use a little bit of Python hackery to get to our file. Now what this does is it's going to get the directory name of the, full, of the location where we're running the script at. So it'll actually, when we run the script, it'll actually go out and check and see this script is running in user Michael documents code and it'll pull that out. Why are we doing this? Well, we saved the config in the same location and we just want to make it really easy to get to. So if we do a base path and email INI, we can just grab it. Now some of you may, may know that you could also access it by just doing config path equals email INI. This normally works, but I've had instances where if I try to, I try to run the script from my desktop using a shortcut, it'll take the shortcuts path instead of the actual files path. And because email I and I it wasn't on the desktop, it's going to fail. This kind of helps keep that from happening because it always will grab the location of where the Python script is, not the shortcut. All right. So we're just going to assume that the path exists. And we'll do a config parser. gfg.read the config. And then the host will just be um, cfg.get, the section name, which is SMTP, and the server name, which in this case we just call it server. And our firm adder, cfg.get, SMTP, and firm adder, of course. So if we were to run this, it would go ahead and grab that information out of the file and then we would just replace like it did before. So this time, we can get rid of this code. That's not needed. And this isn't needed anymore. So our script really gets reduced down a few lines, but now we just have to pass it a few little things here and there. So that's how it would look if you're using the config parser. Now let's spend some time learning about how to send emails using the CC and BCC fields. Rather than just editing this, I'm going to open a file where I've already got the code and I'll just go over what we what the changes are. So I have a send mail three. I'm just bring this up here. And most of this code is pretty much the same. I've added a little bit of error handling, so to speak, where it basically checks to see if the config file exists or not. And if it doesn't, it prints, an, prints basically an error message and then exits. But the meat of the, the code is here in the body. 
So as you can see, we now have from, a to, a cc, a bccs, and a subject. And you'll notice that we're going to be passing it multiple lists, and we're going to join those lists using a comma. So basically we're going to create comma-separated lists for each field. And then at the very end, we have an emails, which equals the two emails, cc and bcc, and you just pass that to your send mail command. So down here at the bottom, we have three lists, so we have one item each. Technically, you could add as many items as you want to each of these to add items to you know the two field, the cc field and the bcc field. So that was pretty easy. And now we're ready to move on to learning about how to add attachments to your emails. OK, to send attachments in your emails, we're going to actually have to use the email module. I'm going to open up SendMail 4, and we'll take a look at how to do that. All right, so the email module is a little bit complicated. Basically, we need to import a several different items from it. The encoders, MIME text, MIME base, MIME multipart, and the format date. The rest of it is fairly similar function-wise. So let's scroll down here and see what we got. OK, the first new item that we really care about is the header. It contains the header for emails in case we needed to add an attachment. In this case, you have the header, content disp disposition, and the attachment, and then the file name. So we'll be passing in the file that we're going to attach to the email, and it just goes right here. The next part that we care about is the MIME multipart. MIME is kind of a format for emails. You can actually go ahead and read the spec online, but it's pretty complicated, and you really don't need to understand everything about it to be able to send an email. But you need this to add attachments. So the MIME multipart actually is quite a bit different than using just the regular send mail. Because as you can see, once we create the my multipart, we basically have a dictionary with a from subject and date field in it. And we're just going to add those items to that dictionary that we passed in. We're also going to use the email's format date to format the date into a special format that emails like to use. Finally, if we pass in a bo some body text for your email body, we're going to add that as kind of an att attachment, but as a MIME text object. This will actually allow you to send uh, plain text or HTML. Next up, we have the MIME base, which is where we get our file stuff. So if you wanted to send an attachment, like a PDF or an Excel fi file, you would use the MIME base to tell that you're going to create a stream, and that's what we're going to attach. So you open up your file in binary mode, read-only binary mode. You read the data in. You attach it using the attachment.setPayload with the data that you've read in. And then you encode it with base64. And then finally, you add the header that we created earlier. And then you attach it to your message object that you created, the multi-part the my multi-part ob part object. Occasionally, you'll run into an I.O. error, which basically means that you aren't able to open the file. You may have a permission issue or whatever. So that's why this is in a try accept. Finally, you get down to the rest of it, and the only real change is that at the very end, you change message dot as string, and that'll turn that message object that we created, the my multi-part object, into a string that SendMail can understand. And there you have it. Now you know how to create emails, send emails with all three different fields, see the two field, the CC field, and the BCC field. And you also know how to add an attachment to an email. I think you're pretty much good to go to actually start creating your own emails with Python. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I'll see you next time.